You may have seen this product around. It's called a shadow box and they are very, very popular. And they're actually quite deep and they come in a range of different sizes. This one is a uh, hundred mil by a hundred mil or four inches by four inches. And I bought this second hand or well, it was virtually new. I bought it in an op shop and it cost me $5. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm actually going to uh, create a nice uh, focal point in uh, in the middle of this shadow box and It's really not much to it. It has a backing to it, which uh, Undo the clips now you may need a screwdriver to undo those clips, but I just use my fingers So it has the backing board. It has the frame to keep everything in the center and then it has uh, the the uh, matte card which hides the frame and then of course it has a piece of glass. Now this glass is not terribly thick. This is about 1.5 mil, but this will be fine for the needs of this because this is only going to be used as a protective cover. Now one thing I am very pleased about is that it's glass and it's not acrylic or perspex because I really, really do like glass in my uh, photo frames. So that just goes in. So what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to actually I'll just move that out of the way. I'm actually going to paint the back of this, uh, or which will be the front, uh, in a black, and I'm gonna paint it in a satin or a matte. I'm not wanting to paint it in a gloss because gloss will show all the imperfections that are in the MDF, and also, it'll show the imperfections in how I paint. So I'm really looking for a matte or a satin paint. So anyway, I'll go do that, we'll come back, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, I've painted the back, it's come up really good. Now, I'm ready for the focal piece. Now, it's dependent on, when you're doing it, it's going to be dependent on what you like. And obviously, if you're giving it as a present, uh, you need to take into consideration what they like in the way of colors and that. But certainly what you put in the center is totally up to you. Now, uh, I have got some of these, which is uh, be bevel, uh, bezels. Uh, left over that I bought some years ago and they're really really terrible quality and uh, I didn't want to throw them out because I knew they would come in handy for something now The top part here where the chain goes through just easily breaks off and of course you're left with this little bit of a uh, this little bit of a um, piece of metal here you can just sand that back and just aim it towards the bottom and no one will see that because that, that will end up to be quite flush. Uh, so that's not really an issue. And you could fill those with, uh, for instance, different colored smalty or um, different uh, crockery, uh, millefiori, whatever you like. And of course, once you put the frame over it, it will actually look quite classy. So it's really dependent on what you want to do with that. And of course, you can also, uh, use these bezels, which are very, very good. Uh, these are actually in excellent quality, and these came from a company here in Australia called 19 Mosaics, and I did a video review on these, so I'll link that up the top here in case you haven't seen that, and I'll put the website of where I bought these down below here in case uh, you want to have a look at that uh, on their online store in case you want to buy them. But they, they are specifically made for 19 Mosaics, and they come in different uh, shapes as well. But you could certainly uh, fill this up with any material you like. Add that in the center. You could add some uh, tassels off this area here. And you could also, if you wanted to, um, to give it a bit of depth, and you could use something like this or polystyrene or whatever you wanted on the back there, adhere that, and you probably can't see it on screen. Uh, but you, it would certainly raise it off that backing board with the tassels on there when you move the shadow box frame there would be a bit of movement in it. So that's another thing that you could use, and that would look really quite effective with, uh, with this filled up with say broken crockery and some tassels coming off the bottom there. But of course, it's personal preference from what you would like to use. Now what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using uh, one of these hearts that I created, and I'm going to actually show you, this is an old one, I'm actually going to show you how I create these, and I think this will look quite good uh, in the actual center there and then of course Your shadow box frame over the top there, and I think that will look quite classy 
So uh, I'm going to be using that. And of course, this has got rhinestones around the outside. You don't have to use rhinestones if you don't want to. You can use uh, seed beads or beads, or, or you don't even need anything around the outside. Uh, I've got this filled with millefiori, but you can use, again, you can use broken crockery. Uh, you could use smalty, broken jewelry, anything you like uh, that's going to suit. Uh, so now what I think I'll do, oh, and the other thing is too, uh, the reason why I've got this on uh, MDF is because if I was to create the focal piece directly onto the backing board, if I make a mistake or I'm a little bit messy, uh, then I'm going to have to redo the backing board. Whereas if I'm creating it on this base here, then it's much easier to clean this up than what it is to try and clean up the backing board and repaint it. So by doing it on this, it will actually work really, really well. And uh, you know, you just cut it to the size that you need. But like I say, you can, you can do the design on the backing board. It's not an issue. It's just I prefer to do it this way. Now for my adhesive, I'm going to be using Mac glue for this. This works really, really well. And uh, you know, some people say, well, why don't you use silicon if you're going to be putting a edge on this? You can use silicon, but if I'm using Mac, this is actually a lot easier to clean up for me than what it is to use silicon, which can leave a residue behind. So I really uh, prefer not to use silicon, especially in delicate uh, pieces like this. Uh, you know, I do use silicon. I don't use it often because it's not my favorite adhesive. Uh, I prefer to use, you know, many others like Mac glue or Thin Set, you know, things like that. But at times I do use silicon for certain projects. Now I'm going to be using uh, a pair of tweezers, uh, the rhinestone chain, uh, which will, um, which is really great. I love using this, and that's really about it. Now this is oh, and a pair of cutters to cut the rhinestone chain. Now these are jewelry cutters. Uh, if you have other cutters, they will probably work as well. But this allows me to get right in to the edge of the rhinestone chain and cut it, so I get a nice clean finish. So I'm only going to just apply a little bit and just squeeze the bottle slightly. That's it. Not a lot. And I'm just going to work it around the outside like that. Now in some cases when you're doing this, if your Mac dries a little bit uh, quicker, then just stop doing the chain and apply a bit more. It's, it's not really a big deal. Uh, because it's just soaking into the uh, MDF. But, you know, because there's quite a bit there, Mac will dry quite, quite well. Okay, so I'm just going to put it on the end there. Now it slid away a bit from the edge, but that's, that's not really an issue because all we do is we grab it and we put it on, back on the end there and we just lay it down. We don't pull on it. We just lay it down, making sure that the chain does not, uh, does not, um, turn over on itself because we don't want to bury those rhinestones in chain uh, in um, MacLu. Now we're going to make sure that the edge of the rhinestone is to the edge or to the point of the heart and then we're going to push it to the edge of the heart because we don't want to we don't want to have it a couple of mil in we want it right on the edge of the heart so you just need to take your time and as you do this Constantina it together because we don't want to have gaps in the chain. We want to make sure that the rhinestones are very, very close and touching each other because it will look a lot better. And so we're still continuing to push this to the edge. And then we get this and just pull it back in here like that. Like I said, it's, it's reasonably time consuming, but it, uh, I, I really like how it turns out. And then we just make sure we don't turn that chain. See, that's it, we bring it back on itself. That's it. You don't want to go over the timber across the MDF, so, but you want to make sure it's all pushed up fairly close together. And it's just taking your time. Now you may have an easy way of doing this, 
But this is the way that I've done it and it's worked really, really well. And then we just use the edge of the tweezers to actually push against the timber. So it's to the, so the rhinestone or rhinestones are to the edge of the timber. They're not in and they're not sticking out because we really don't want to see that timber. And look, to be honest, if it happens to be where you do see a little bit of the timber, it's not a major thing, but we want to keep it as close as possible to that edge. That looks right it. And then you just have a look around, just check it before you leave it. But you can always come back and check it anyway. And uh, now what we're going to do, you can actually leave this and come back to it and cut it off. But me being me is a little bit impatient at times. So I'm actually going to cut this now and I'm going to uh, put these close because these are really good and we're going to just cut that off there. Doesn't matter if I move it because that's got it. Because I will just re-straighten it up. That's it. And that MAC glue will dry. And the beauty about doing this, uh, putting a focal piece is you don't have to grout it. Well, there is no grouting it because I'm going to be using Milli Fiori. And although you can grout Milli Fiori, uh, why would you want to on a piece like this anyway? Okay, and then when you're happy with the shape, and it looks pretty good, then you can just leave that. Now, you can leave this, you just make sure that the round, it's a nice round curve in it. You know, you don't want a sharp point anywhere, it's gotta look like it flows. Now, you can leave this and come back to it uh, once it's dry and do the other half, or you can continue on. Now, this excess glue, what you can do is get a cotton, uh, cotton bud, and wipe that up if you wish to do that. And I generally do go around the edge and just wipe it up a little bit if, if, if there is a bit of excess. So I'll show you how that's done as well. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to just clean up that edge a little bit where there's a bit of just, just gently dab it because what we wanna do is we want to not have a thick line of adhesive because we wanna put the Miller Fiori very close to that edge. So there's what we're looking at is no gaps. So by soaking it up a bit, it clears the way to put the Miller Fiori close to that edge. And that's all we're doing. And besides, it just spreads it out anyway. And then you just go again and you just check to make sure it's outside, it's, it's to the edge of that timber again. You don't wanna go over it and you don't wanna put it in so you actually see the timber. And then you can let that set or you can do the other side. So I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, let's try this. Now you can start off from the bottom and go up there if you like, but uh, which is probably not a bad idea. You get into your own system on how you wanna do it. So again, we're going to lay the chain there. That's it. And then we can drop it. And then I'll use the tweezers here. So as we hold that, Again, we bring it around and we'll just pop that up into there. Keeping that chain close together. Tweezers are very, very important in this particular job. Okay, move that over there. to cut that off. That's it. If you're not into fiddly things, 
then it's not going to be, this focal piece is not going to be a project for you. And that's why you will see me finitely adjusting things because I don't want to really have to go back to it when it's really starting to set up quite well. And I consider that pretty well done. So now what we'll do is we'll leave this and uh, I'll just clean up that edge too. Just to we'll spread it out and spread it out if you want. You don't have to soak it up, but you just don't want, you know, a, a huge big amount of Mac glue on that edge there because you won't get Millefiori or whatever other product you're going to be using. Uh, you won't get that right to the edge and you really want it to the edge. Okay, everything's ready now. The adhesive has dried quite well. I've got my Millefiori here in different sizes. If I want to use different sizes, you don't have to, but I'm using different sizes. I've got my double wheeled nippers here as well because I'm going to need to cut the Millefiori and that's where it can get a little bit fiddly. Like I say, this can be quite time consuming, uh, but it's, it's also fun at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up in one area and I'm going to work down. Now, once I start in one area and I've done a little area, I'm going to go across to the other side or into a different area because I want those to kind of like semi set in place. Now, when you're doing this, you may actually uh, bump and knock things around and it's not really going to matter too much because that adhesive will set up. You can always add more adhesive if required because the beauty about it is it dries clear and it dries very, very clear. You can't tell if you've added more adhesive. So that's where this works really well with Mac glue. And also you couldn't do that with silicon because you would have silicon everywhere. Well, I would anyway, so you might be better at it than me. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is start in one area and we'll uh, go forward. And I, I put a fair amount now when I'm doing this because the chain will stop the Mac glue from falling outside of the heart. So now it's just a matter of choosing which colors you want or maybe you're just going to do all multiple colors. It really doesn't matter, it's a personal preference. I like to use uh, the very small pieces, maybe a mixture. Uh, so I'm just going to go with it. And also when you look at your Millefiori, generally it depends how they're cut. Sometimes they will have a nice flat bottom and other times they may not on, on the other side. So I choose the flattest bottom out there and then I put that down into it. And I push it hard against, or not hard, but I push it firmly against the actual rhinestone chain because what we're looking for is we don't want really any gaps or any noticeable gaps. And then, uh, you know, you can choose another color or whatever you want to do. We'll go with the white. Again, I'm going to put that on there. And you know, you might decide, okay, well, that's working quite well, but it's not where I want, so I'm going to move it. That's fine. You can you can do whatever you like to do. That's a personal preference. And here's a, uh, I'll use, and this is where it's gonna take some time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get this started and then I'm going to then uh, fast forward with this uh, so as you don't see me taking up so much, otherwise this will go for an hour, this, this video alone. And you've just gotta remember, if you put a big bit, and there's a small piece here, you may have a gap here. So that's where you can put, perhaps, where are we? I'll get that piece out. That's where you can put a small piece like this into that gap to hold it there. Uh, not to hold it there, to fill up that space. And sometimes, and I've cut those with the double wheeled nippers, so you have to be prepared that there's going to be some fine cutting. There you go. So now what we've got is that gap has been completely sealed off, which is what you're after. So now I'll stop talking and I will keep recording and then we'll come back after I've done this, but th this will go quite fast now uh, from your point of view in, in viewing it.
It's really just a matter of putting it in where it fits the best. So you may have to move things, you may have to take one out and wipe it out with a uh, piece of cloth to get the mat glue off it and reuse it. Uh, a word of advice, if you have any very small ones, it's always good to keep them out here because they can be quite difficult to find. So any small slithers or any small, uh, very small millefiori, it's always good to keep it out of the container uh, because then you can just use it pretty well quickly because you can, you found it, you know, it's already sitting there. Now you want these pieces to be firmly in together and pretty well all gaps closed. But you also have to be careful is when you push them up together that you don't raise these pieces in here. So you've got to kind of like keep pushing them down but pushing them together so as those gaps are closed because it's going to be very difficult if you get a gap in the middle there somewhere and you don't see it, it's going to be very difficult to be able to get Mac glue in there and then another piece of tester in there. It does, it has happened to me and I have done it without a problem, but it just means more or it means further, uh, you know, playing around to get it right. So we're going quite well here. It, it's all coming together well. So we've just got to hope that it keeps moving this way. There you go, it's all finished. Now what we just have to do now is just check to make sure everything's pushed down in and uh, you know, it's not gonna come up. Last chance to see if you've got any gaps there where you can fill those, but you know, I mean, a few small little gaps is not gonna matter, but you really don't want anything too noticeable. And whatever you do, don't use your hand to push down on the tessera, on the millefiori, because if you do that, it will stick to your hand 
and you will lift them. And that's what happened to me on the very first piece that I created uh, years ago. I did that, I pushed down, and I was actually wearing gloves and it stuck to, to the gloves. By using the tweezers, it has less surface area for the tessera or the millefiori to grab onto uh, the tweezers. So just go around, push it down, and that's pretty well it. So we'll come back and see what it's like when it's all dried, which will be tomorrow. Well, there you go. I think it came up really well. It looks really good and it's definitely blingy. Now what we'll do is we'll install that into the actual shadow box. Now I'm going to actually uh, put the shadow box partially together. I have got the background here and I have put a cross on where I would like the, and you won't see that on camera because it's a black cross, but I did put a cross there because uh, I'd like to have an idea of where I'm going to put it. But you know, the frame uh, could be slightly out of uh, shape or the uh, matte board could be slightly out. So what I'm going to do is actually put this in the frame but leave the glass out. And I'm going to actually come in from the top and put it in uh, because then I can really look at uh, having it centered. Now I'm just going to put this all back together just a little bit. Won't worry about the bottom. Oh, I better put the bottom one in, I suppose. Uh, and this will give me a really good idea because then I can, I'm pretty sure the cross will be fairly right, but uh, you know, from my experience, nothing is, is uh, really exact. So this way I can just put it in where I want and that'll be that. And then I can then allow it to uh, set for a day or two and then put the glass in. And I'm going to just adhere the, uh, the heart in with some, uh, uh, what is it? It's uh, SMX uh, hybrid polymer because this is like a silicon, but it actually doesn't contain any of those hazardous symbols because it doesn't have any solvents in it. So it's a lot better to use. So I'm just going to unscrew the top that I put on because I have been using it. And I'll just get rid of that little bit. And I'm only going to apply it in the center because if I can maneuver it around to get it center if required uh, once it's in the shadow box. But if I put the hot silicon or the, the not silicon, this adhesive uh, all over the place, then when I move it, I may actually have some at the side here. So I'm only going to put a dollop in the center. And that's it. That's more than enough. We're just going to now put it in. I've got a cross there approximately, but I don't think that cross is going to be right anyway. That looks pretty good. And we just maneuver that around like that. So it grabs, there you go. And that's pretty well right. So now what we'll do is we'll leave that. That's what it looks like. And I think it looks really, really good. Uh, we'll leave that. I'll um, put the glass in and then uh, we'll come back and uh, and see what it looks like finished. Oh, the other thing I want to mention too is if you're using any of these type of adhesives, uh, these caps are really good. It, it's called Saver Tube, and I have actually done a review on them. And they really do keep uh, the adhesive and silicons and all those type of things uh, in really good condition. Uh, I've had uh, some of them for a year, and I've taken the Saver Tube off, and the inside adhesive is really, really. Uh, very good condition because I know when I've used other caps or even uh, you know you put bolts in or nails in or whatever the case may be uh, they dry out uh, whereas these caps I find they really work but uh, I just thought I'd mention that because I thought you know there's a lot of people that do use silicon and uh, tube adhesives like this and I thought that would be a good mention and our piece is totally finished well I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you've taken something away from it uh, if you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comments section and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.